Good evening. We begin with breaking news here at 7. Lolita, the beloved killer whale, has died in captivity. The 57-year-old orca, also known by her native name Toki, has been in captivity for five decades. CBS News Miami's Larry Seward joins us live from the Miami Seaquarium tonight with an update. Larry? Yeah, Lauren, lots of hard feelings here. People driving by expressing their sympathies for Toki, as she's known in her Native American name, and people here know her as Lolita. I want to give you a shot of what's going on behind me right now. I'll warn you, however, this could be graphic. There is a sheet covering the beloved orca Lolita at this hour. We're told over the last couple of days, the folks providing care for Lolita, the experts, both mammal, marine mammals as well as medical experts, they started seeing signs of serious discomfort. Now, of course, the Miami Seaquarium and Friends of Toki were in charge of the treatment with her. They said they treated her immediately and aggressively, but this afternoon she passed from a renal condition. We don't have many more details beyond that. Obviously, Toki, an inspiration to many, many people. I mentioned people driving by, stopping and talking to us. Some people wondering if they would be able to uh, to see Toki one last time. Of course, her exhibit has been closed for some period of time. I'm here with someone that this is not just another story. Um, this is personal for. I do want to read a statement, though, from the Sequarium first. I'll say over the last two days, they say Toki started exhibiting those serious signs of discomfort, which her full Miami Sequarium and Friends of Toki medical team began treating immediately and aggressively. Despite receiving the best possible medical care, she passed away from what is believed to be a renal condition. Toki was an inspiration to all who had the fortune to hear her story and especially to the illumination that considered her family. Those who have had the privilege to spend time with her will forever remember her beautiful spirit. Edward R. Cromus, you used to be her trainer. This is personal. Yes, I, I spent many years working here at the Seaquarium and I did have the privilege of working with her many years as one of her trainers and this is a sad day for me. I know a lot of people are probably experiencing some some rough times in there, and there's many, many more people out there that she touched and got to work with for many years that I, I know are going through the same feelings I'm going through right now. You worked with other mammals here at the Seaquarium. Her. What made her special? What made her different? She, she was a super unique animal, um, far different than any other, which at times in the recent years when people expressed that they knew her from working with her for only a few months, or her head trainer who worked with her for eight months. It takes a few years to really get to know and understand this animal. And for me, working with animals for 20 years in a zoological setting, this animal was so unique. She didn't do well with change. She was very fond of longtime trainers. And those longtime trainers, she would actually offer behaviors to that newer trainers could not get. So I want to ask you this because you mentioned change. We were in the process the last 12 months, people may know this story, right. the relocation. There was, there was a huge effort, a, a first of its kind partnership between the Friends of Toki and an aquarium, medical teams working together, for focusing on her diet and her habitat, trying to keep her healthy and figure out a way to get her taken back to the Pacific Northwest, right. Puget Sound, where back in the 1970s, people captured orcas right. and sold them to different parks, aquariums, hence how Lolita got here. Right. The movement, the plan movement of, of Lolita is not something that you were comfortable with. Why? No. You know, I would love for her to go back out into the wild or been out in the wild, you know, swim in the deep waters, feel the ocean. It's a fairy tale. Okay, you know, I've rescued many manatees, been a part of many rehabs, pilot whales, dolphins. There are candidates that are good candidates, and there are candidates that are not. You know, NOAA plays a big part in that. USDA plays a big part in that. And this animal was not a good candidate. She was habituated. She spent her whole life here. The slightest change would throw her off with her diet or her environment. And I didn't support it. I, I support whatever is best for her, but that was not. The effort did get a lot of support from Billionaire, the owner of the Indianapolis Colts of the NFL, was behind supporting advocacy with, with right. this move. Obviously, the big news today is Lolita's passing, which leaves you tremendously sad, my friend. Thank, uh, you. thank you for your time. Sorry thank for you. the loss. Lots of people like Edward here stopping by, expressing those condolences. We're live on Virginia Key. Larry Seward, CBS News, Miami. Going to uh, Larry Seward, who is at the Miami Seaquarium in Virginia Key. This is a live picture as workers have hoisted uh, Lolita from the uh, 
the pool there where she has been for five decades now onto that truck. This is uh, news that broke this afternoon. The Seaquarium announcing that Lolita, whose native name is Toki, who's been at the Miami Seaquarium for some five decades now, has passed away. And now those workers are taking Lolita's body uh, on that truck. We're not exactly sure where it's headed. Uh, we do know based on the statement from the Seaquarium that her death was tied to some renal issues. Again, being in captivity for more than five decades. Unclear whether at this point where she will be taken is to undergo a necropsy to determine an exact cause of death. We don't know those details at this time. Again, you are looking at live pictures if you are just joining us. These are live pictures from Key Biscayne and Miami Seaquarium where the body of Lolita, the killer whale, has been lifted out of the pool in which she has been held for the past 50 50 plus years and her body is being put into a flatbed of, of some sort to be moved outside of the Seaquarium. Uh, of course, we will continue to stay on top of this breaking story tonight and bring you the latest on CBS News Miami at 11. We'll be right back.